All right, all right, dear colleagues, I guess we can smoothly start. So it's my pleasure to introduce you uh, our today's speaker, uh, Dr. Alexey Kochanovsky, uh, who is a senior research fellow in Novosibirsk State University, so quite far away from us, in different time zone. And uh, Alexey today will tell, tell us about implementation of artificial intelligence algorithms in fiber mode locked lasers. So I would briefly remind you the rules of the seminar. In case if you have any questions, please either raise your hand. You may also type your question in the chat. Uh, you may also uh, ask the question by voice, but please make sure not to interrupt the speaker in the middle of the discussion. So Alexey, please, uh, the stage is yours. Okay, uh, thank you. Hello to everyone. Uh, I would like to thank uh, to, to give me opportunity to uh, give a talk here. It's a great pleasure. And uh, so here is uh, my home, Novosibirsk State University, where we did our experiment. Uh, and I welcome you to, to come and to maybe discuss some problems if you will be interested in this area. Uh, so I was told that the audience will be broad. So first I'll spend uh, some time for brief, brief introduction into fiber model lasers. Then I give a brief, a brief overview of IE in fiber lasers. And then uh, I would like to discuss three, actually three implementation of this algorithm for design and optimization of model of fiber lasers. Then I will speak about how such algorithms help us to build uh, feedback systems. And finally, I would like to share you our recent advances in implementation of uh, reinforcement learning for self-tuning lasers. So, in fact, uh, fiber model lasers, the development of uh, fiber model lasers closely relates to advances in optical telecommunications. So, I think the birth of interest in fiber lasers uh, happens when uh, technology provides uh, fibers with low absorption. And probably at this moment, the most cheaper model of fiber lasers will be at uh, 1.5 micrometers because all parts that are used to build uh, telecommunication systems may be used uh, to create fiber model of lasers. Alexey, uh, sorry, there, there is the, the very first question from Andrei. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry for, for the silly question. I usually uh, show the, the, this figure even in, in my lectures. But, 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 but I, have a, I have a question about the notations of these uh, uh, wavelength bands, frequency bands. Are there some uh -huh. abbreviations? Of what is, I know it's regular, like CL, like yes. regular, or regular telecom, but uh, is there some, some meaning of, 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 of these uh, uh, letters? Of, this? of these letters? Yeah. Well, I, actually, I, I think probably yes, but I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so C, so usually now it's operating on C and L. Uh, yeah. Bandwidth, but no. Sorry, I don't know. Okay. No. Okay. Thank you. I just only know that there was a quite so technology struggle with these peaks uh, connected to uh, I don't know in English O H. O H groups. Yeah. Yes, so after know. they find out how to to remove it, so everything works fine. And actually, this uh, CL band is quite, uh, in theory, is is the minimum for fiber, uh, for silica fiber. So, okay. okay. But so, Alexei, does this picture depend on the material of the fiber? Uh, so Yes, yes, of course. I mean, yes. Well, actually, if you write write me, I can share you the book that the guy spent a lot of time of uh, investigating the the history of developing. And in fact, all history was is to finding the way to 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 get a good uh, a total reflection to find the structure. And in fact, different fibers are doped. So to to modulate the index profile, you are doping. Uh, the you are doping by, uh, for example, germanium, uh, germanium uh, or phosphorus uh, elements, and uh, depending on it, uh, there is there are slight, uh, uh, yeah, there are slight changing 
changes on uh, losses. And yeah, one thing comes to mind all the well. So if you try to propagate the radiation at probably 2.2, so you will observe extremely high uh, losses. So people developing uh, fibers based on, uh, sorry, in English is telur, telurid fibers to, to give access of, uh, so mid infrared uh, spectrum. So yes, of course, it depends on mm -hmm. material. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, uh, so probably the straightforward uh, and most, uh, I mean, intuitive early, so the most uh, straightforward way to to reach pulses inside the fiber cavity is to put a uh, amplitude modulator inside. But the problem is, and to modulate the total resonator losses. But uh, the problem is that this technology cannot uh, achieve pulses shorter than probably several nanosecond or. Uh, and to if you want to generate pulses, let's say at femtosecond scale, you should address uh, mod locking technique. So 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 ca laser cavity has different longitudinal modes uh, that are equally spaced in spectral domain. If you play around this formula and start to sum these uh, modes. Uh, and then come to time domain, you will see that uh, in time domain, a pulse, uh, you will observe a pulse of the train, uh, train pulses. And uh, more modes are involved in, in mode locking, uh, the shorter pulse you can obtain. And it's uh, very important to, to fix the phase difference between uh, longitudinal modes. So if you introduce some time dependent random phase, you will see that your uh, pulse rain will uh, break up and you will see some unstable fluctuation. So in fact, all this uh, fiber, uh, developing of fiber model lasers is all about how to manipulate with a phase for different longitudinal mode in order to, to get a stable pulsing regime. Uh, so if you will consider the fiber, and so you need to use a so-called nonlinear Schrodinger equation that describes the evolution of the amplitude and the phase of the optical wave uh, during propagation inside the fiber. So th this one is simplest case when only two effect is I involved, so it's a chromatic dispersion and a self-phase modulation that introduced by uh, care nonlinearity. And uh, actually, it's quite universal uh, equation. You may find it in the uh, area of hydrodynamic, uh, Bose, Einstein condensate in biology, and uh, there is pretty common. But so, Alexei, Alexei uh, yes. sorry, uh, a short question about this equation. So, is it like paraxial approximation? Uh, it's a uh, approximation of slowly varying envelope. Uh -huh. And so, therefore, you get on the first derivative in Z coordinate. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so, I think you all common with uh, solitons it's a, actually it's a solution for for such a kind of equation and uh, I, re I will repeat that it solitons uh, you can meet it in hydrodynamics like soliton wave in the ocean and so on and actually such a solution was found was found at uh, fiber lasers as well uh, so uh, in fact, the stable solution of the soliton is a uh, balance between nonlinearity and uh, dispersion. And uh, I don't know about other area, but in fiber optics, you have a strict uh, limitation in in the energy of the pulse. So, uh, so if you build a laser, you cannot exceed like some hundreds of picojoule energy of the pulses. 
and it, it makes uh, different uh, groups of uh, science to find the way how to generate more energetic pulses. In fact, uh, you can uh, make nonlinear Schrodinger equation more complex by introducing linear losses and gain. You can even make you can even make it more complicated by introducing some Raman scattering, Boolean scattering, and other effects. Uh, and uh, also, there, there is also a solution for, for such equations. Not, not an analytical one, but when you proceed the uh, numerical calculation of the laser cavity, you can find various type of pulses, uh, like for people searching different stable regime for, for decades. And if you are interested in uh, exploring uh, the different types of pulses uh, that you can obtain with fiber lasers, I would like to recommend you this uh, review article. Uh, in fact, uh, so I don't know, uh, I, uh, in nanomaterials, you can say that you have like nonlinearity positive and negative but uh, when you be talking about uh, fiber lasers in inf uh, mid inf or near infrared spectrum range the non-linear uh, non coefficient is always uh, positive and uh, in fact all types of pulses <clears throat> you can classify by the total uh, dispersion of the laser cavity, including uh, similitons, dissipative soliton, dispersion managed solitons, and so on. It's just only a couple of them. I don't want to explain everyone, every, every, every pulse, pulse regime, but I would like to focus only on one type, dissipative solitons, uh, and explain why. So uh, unlike for solitons, when, uh, where only nonlinearity and uh, dispersion take part in stabilizing the, the pulse. In dissipative solitons, the dissipative effects also play the role. So it's about gain and uh, losses. Uh, and in the scope of application of artificial intelligence, this type of pulses are quite attractive because they are very flexible. The limitation, so it doesn't have such limitation, strict limitation as the classical solitons. And you, by changing the parameter of the laser cavity, you can uh, get arbitrary value of time bandwidth product actually. And the energy of such sources uh, of dissipative solitons uh, may exceed microjoule uh, levels. So, the last thing that I want to, 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 to explain to you about uh, fiber model of lasers is that it's not enough just managing uh, to manage uh, nonlinearity and dispersion. Uh, to, to be able to generate pulses, you need to introduce into the laser cavity a so called satur uh, saturable absorber. So it's an element that discriminates uh, continuous wave uh, radiation against pulse radiation. Uh, and you, uh, so various scientific articles are written about it, but you can actually divide it in two main parts. So there is a material saturable absorber, for example, semiconductor absorbers uh, that have a specific uh, transmission curve. So you can see that the, uh, the reflectance increase uh, when the intensity increase. Uh, and uh, there are also artificial saturable absorber. Uh, it, it, it's called artificial because in this element there is no actually absor uh, absorption of the radiation, alike for semiconductors absorber. Uh, but uh, the curve have uh, similar uh, tendency to, to, to increase, so the transmission increase uh, well when you increase the peak power of the input uh, pulses. So by, so in fact, when you want to, to design fiber model of laser, you should take uh, this in mind. So you first should uh, select appropriate dispersion and uh, nonlinear parameters of the cavity and also 
uh, find appropriate saturable absorber to to be capable to obtain a stable double lock regime. But so, uh, Alexei, the yes. question about this saturable absorption. So, does this absorber make uh, our pulses sharper, or on the contrary, they become less sharp because of this saturable uh, absorption? In fact, uh, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, it make a possibility to actually to get any pulses, but in in case when you so if you see the di distribution of the pulse, so you have a maximum at uh, so you have a maximum and some distribution. So when you will transfer it from to uh, through the such element, so you will effectively see that this pulse will sharp will will be sharper at the output. Yeah, it's correct. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it seems that like you have a maximum of the field and it is reflected. So you suppress the maximum and you somehow uh, boost the minimum. No, 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 no. Op opposite. You, 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 you suppress minimum. Uh, pro uh, so, mm, in fact, uh, just. Uh, I take these pictures, but you should consider it like transmission. Let's say it's quite, I mean, it's my fault, I think. Uh, ah, so I, I should read this as transmission. Uh, yes, the yes, yes. <laughs> sorry, because this one is, uh, it's actually a saturable absorber mirror. So you use the reflectance, uh, radi radiation that reflects. So sorry, it's my fault. Uh, this, so it's uh, quite. Okay. Okay. Now it's clear. Yeah. So yeah. So for example, these properties uh, actually may be used in signal processing uh, by suppressing a low power noise. So there was a lot of work uh, devoted to, to this. Uh, so uh, well, I think I finished expl explaining uh, principles of fiber model lock laser. So if you have any question about this part, uh, probably it's better to ask right now. Alicia, um, maybe you can you can you can uh, give more a bit more details on this artificial uh, absorption. So, what's if there is no real absorption? What's the origin for for the absorption? Uh, yeah. Uh, so here, for example, so there is different type of it, uh, but I would like to explain the principle of such saturable. Uh, so presented uh, saturable absorber. It's called nonlinear optical loop mirror. In fact, it's a uh, some kind of SANYAC interferometer. So, uh, in, so there is a fiber coupler uh, that is two ports are connected to each other. And when the input radiation comes into, do you see the arrow uh, I'm pointing? You? No? Yeah, we see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So the input radiation comes into this coupler. Uh, it splits into two parts and it's propagate clockwise and contrawise direction. And if the intensity is very high, so you can see the difference between phase that accumulate for the wave contour, uh, clockwise and contrawise. When these two waves comes again into coupler, sorry, it's in Russian. Uh, so there is a infer interference phenomenon. So, the part of the wave comes back and some part comes to, to the transmission part. So there is no any absorption, the, the energy conserves. So if you put if you sum the output radiation from the both port, it will be the same. Uh, so, uh, uh, but depending on the phase accumulation, you, you can see that the, the, the higher pulse, peak power of the pulse, you can see that the, the output pulse, the, 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 the transmission will increase as well. So that is why it doesn't saturate, the, the, uh, the, it doesn't saturate any energy, but the curve uh, put in more uh, advantage the pulse with the higher peak power. Uh, so does the phase start to behave non-linearly or why? Yes, they, uh, 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 actually, yes, just uh, I can, well, I, 
I have some slides explaining it more, but I need to rechange the presentation. Do you mind if you change or I can explain mm. after? I, I don't know. So we, we can you can change, of course. Just I was I was having a very general question. So is it so the phase phase starts to depend on intensity, yeah? That's why the interference yeah, yes. Yes, uh, yes, is yes. not is not that. Hey, okay, yes. I think that's that's enough to, to okay. understand the basic the basic idea. Yeah, yes. that's sorry for our ignorance. We may not know all these uh, okay. systems, but yeah, I think that's more or less clear. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, so I just yeah. So I switched to some kind of implementation of artificial intelligence inside the fiber model of laser. So in fact, uh, the the laser have a lot of free uh, degrees of freedom. And actually this uh, article inspired me to start my own investigation in this field. So here the uh, genetic algorithm was implemented to self-start uh, fiber laser. So there is different regimes and the genetic algorithm allows you to, to find the stable soliton generation. Uh, also, there are attempts more complicated. So by introducing special uh, devices. Alekik, uh, Alekik uh, uh, sorry, could you just at least maybe give some more details how uh, did you use or how they use this uh, genetic algorithm for stabilization of solid uh, Just a few words, please. Uh, uh, yeah, if you let me, I will introduce it in more detail because I implement a genetic algorithm for, for my system. And uh, I, I, if you let me, I will explain it. it it's a part when I will introduce our results. Okay, 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 thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So <clears throat> also there is uh, attempts to, to implement some uh, algorithm to optimize the output radiation by introducing uh, special light modulator. Uh, so this, this part actually works as a tunable spectral filter and uh, people try to well succeed in manipulating with spectral width. Uh, then there are even more complicated systems that implement a variation after encoder to create a system that is uh, has immune for environmental disturbance. However, it's so complicated that I didn't find any uh, experimental realization. So it's just only numerical modeling. And final, so, but anyway, so this article shows that in fact, machine learning algorithm uh, is a potential candidate to, to create some uh, instruments to stabilize you, st uh, to create smart stabilization system for the lasers. And the last one, so people are thinking about uh, creating the feedback systems based on neural networks, for example, for compression in the pulses. So it's a very important in, uh, in the field of fiber optics. I mean, that uh, one, is, if, I think you know that uh, one quite recent no Nobel Prize is, is connected to compression of the fem uh, compression of the pulses and actually in the, in this area there is always highly dimensional problem and the neural networks can mm, uh, help to, to optimize such setups but uh, Alexei, yeah. just just to understand the problem setting and does it mean that the people uh, change some parameters of the laser and its resonator yes. Uh, dynamically during the operation of the laser. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they need some algorithms which which will adjust these parameters appropriately to, to ensure. Yeah. Yes, but just because so usually if you just start to think about some problem, you will try grid uh, grid search. So you have a net. So I mean, you have some like several parameters, and you just will. Sweep, sweep, sweep for for different uh, linearly sweep for different values, but in case of highly dimensional problem when you have a parameter, let's say four, five, six, the time will take so much time that uh, it's not feasible. So, in in fact, uh, 
in fact, in this case, people trying to find some more smarter way, but uh, yeah, smarter way. Because you still have some uh, finite time for optimization of the, the laser yeah. business. But is, is it done cyclically? So it, it is, you modulate some properties periodically or it's... Uh, well, uh, as this thing, I mean, after it find... Uh, so in this case, it depends on the problem. In this case, once you train it, it's, so it's, it will finish. But if you if your laser have some time dependency, so... I think that the better way is to implement it uh, periodically by re -tra uh, retrain your, your models. Because uh, when you start to work in with machine learning algorithm, you start to understand that in fact, it show efficiency only on the distribution that you was trained for. If you go outside this distribution, it will the, the the error will increase dramatically uh, every time. There is no uh, there is no uh, magic, there, <laughs> so you, you need to pre-train it. Mm -hmm. And then and then more practical question. So do I understand correctly that you cannot get this femtosecond laser pulses without uh, some clever optimization approaches? Uh, but what do you mean about clever uh, optimization? Uh, using some neural networks, genetic algorithms, and stuff like. Yeah, that. you can, you can, you, of, of course, you can. Uh -huh. So, so just just to understand what is like the significance of this uh, stuff. Well, actually, I consider this all as a high level engineering. So, of course, so it's a multidisciplinary thing that you take some unknown things, but very well known for others field of science and implement mm -hmm. to the laser. So actually it's about, I mean, I consider it's more engineering than, uh, than high science. You know, you don't uh, discover uh, like something, nature laws or something uh, mm -hmm. at this moment. So this is only about optimization of your time. Right, right, thanks. Okay. Uh, uh, and so, uh, sorry, and, and another question is, uh, could you comment why don't you use here uh, and uh, for previous uh, works uh, which you showed uh, gradient bait based optimization sorry it's not my work uh, to mention <laughs> it's just oh, my, my, maybe maybe oh. you, you you can comment this uh, yeah, no, why, uh, why people use genetic algorithm instead of gradient based optimization because five six or ten parameters is is quite small parameter space uh, well I think first of all it's like uh, you know I can say about me that uh, it actually it's it's when when it's new for uh, for uh, I mean how say you take it as a challenge. It is really interesting to to try different technologies and uh, it's a uh, technologies and there is no any handbook. You can say okay, this method will every time works better than than others. Uh, about this one, why is the, 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 there is a theorem that there is no such a method, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. but uh, but I think gradient based optimization is something we, when when it works, uh, you don't need anything else. So, yeah, uh, uh, usu well, you usually people try it first and then uh, something else when it doesn't work. Uh, well, actually, here, well, okay, so the answer for your question, I didn't uh, work with this problem, but probably there is not so much smooth gradient as this. So actually what they do here, they optimize some fitness function. And if your fitness function, you know, is very complicated and it doesn't, I mean, how to say in English, if your max, you have a, a lot of maximums and minimums and you actually have areas not connected. So for example, there is no stable solution. So this type of gradient descent algorithm will uh, fail to converge or it will converge at local minimum uh, so but uh, once again it's not my uh, work uh, they, uh, so i'm not really capable to say why they use neural network uh, probably it's a very high <laughs> high uh, topic so why don't you use such type of uh, yeah okay and and the fitness function is known analytically right yes yes uh, I see. okay i see thank you okay uh yeah so uh yeah 
but yeah so if you are interested in this topic i would recommend you i would like to recommend you this review article actually our group were taking part uh, of the uh, of this article and this article covers not only smart lasers but different other type of implementation of machine learning stuff uh, like uh, characterization of nonlinear phenomena, optical computations, or high-speed optical measurements. So they have a lot of uh, a, a large literature list, and you may start exploring them if you're interested in the field. And uh, now I would like you to so yeah to sum up. Uh, when we uh, we have analyzed the the, the, the works that were done before us, uh, we we, are, we were interested in, in implementation of such algorithm. Uh, so first of all, to build self-starting, self-optimization, and lasers, and uh, for example, searching some algorithms that. Uh, is capable to uh, stabilize generation under environment influences and second one probably so uh, it is well known then uh, for example machine learning algorithms uh, is uh, very efficient for regression task and uh, this make it interesting in creating some systems that uh, uh, feedback systems so so let's start with uh, lasers that we are considering in our investigations so here it's a, actually it's a test best test bed for for our ideas for machine learning uh, so it's so-called eight figure laser and uh, the main feature of it so it can generate high energy dissipative solitons Second, you don't need to complex technologies that is required to design like semiconductor uh, saturable absorbers or nanotubes or some, something like this. And the, the last one, probably not important for many application, but uh, such artificial absorber as a loop mirror introduce a low level of noise in the pulse train and actually the why why this uh, uh, system provides a high variability of the parameters it's a two uh, active amplifying fibers by which you can tune the nonlinear phase accumulation so actually when uh, Mikhail asked about uh, phase so that's why the phase accumulated differently uh, depending on the on the peak power of the radiation so okay uh, so just probably it's connected to a, another question so here uh, i'd like to introduce the, the complexity of the parameters of the output radiation that uh, generating such laser so there is a, a lot of uh, unbound, unbounded areas so probably implementation some simple gradient uh, descent algorithm will, will not work uh, so by white uh, areas uh, uh, so white, white areas corresponds to unstable uh, regimes uh, and the color one uh, corresponds to stable mode locking regime and we tried to so our first uh, project was to to implement genetic algorithms in order to optimize the output radiation so here uh, 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 i'm sorry can, 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 can i ask from there yeah. so here different figures correspond to different uh, mm. parameters so average power duration of the pulse and radio yeah. frequency yes I, okay I, I, yeah, so, so, it's, it's, uh, radio frequency con what is radio frequency contrast sorry for uh yeah in fact uh, so uh, yeah sorry i just have a limited time to to explain everything and the yeah. part of fiber model of lasers but in fact so yeah mo fiber model of lasers it's a source of the train of the pulse so it's a comb actually it's a comb and uh, so 
if you may, so if you uh, do for me are you familiar in radio frequency measurement so in so, fact it's so, so. Uh, so in fact uh, just imagine in time domain the pulse train and you take a fourier uh, fourier transformation of a time domain pulse train so you will get uh, another comp but in a frequency domain and uh, radio frequency uh, so by analyzing this radio frequency spectrum you can say about the quality of the mod locking so by so when you analyze radio frequency uh, spectrum you can say how you can say about uh, amplitude fluctuation and timing time jitter of pulses so amplitude modulation is clear so it's uh, just a uh, pulse to pulse uh, peak power and uh, timing timing jitter it's a phenomena when the distance between pulses uh, fluctuating in time so uh, by measuring radio frequency contrast actually show you the uh, the quality of mod locking regime this contrast is the uh, so, the ratio the ratio between the uh, between the peaks in the in the spectrum yeah for so for example you have a pulse train that the peak is that the with some frequency so, uh, with a fundamental frequency you can see here it's in the central part of this so by measuring the contrast between the maximum peak and the lower part you can say the, about the quality uh the quality of mod locking how how okay okay yeah. how nice it's uh how, yeah the, uh, yeah well i i'm saying general things i mean not general things but uh i i try to say general things but okay, there is a lot of uh, nuances <laughs> in what i'm saying so but uh, generally by the contrast you can say about the quality of mod locking in, in, inside your laser so yeah so because of this uh, distribution of the fitness function we, we we implement genetic algorithm because in fact inside of it it's, it doesn't take any gradient and uh, it's a heuristic uh, uh, algorithm and uh, so <clears throat> every pulsing regime is considered as a individual of population and it has a genes so for, in, for our for our case it's a, a pumping power of the laser diet and each individual may be characterized by its parameters like duration spectral weights and so on As I say, uh, next you need to design a fitness function that will be correspond so the maximum or minimum will correspond to the pulse regime that you would like to to get and uh, there are two, two important parts of, uh, of the algorithm. First, you sort your population by this fitness function and take only a part of it. And also there is a procedure of mate, mating and mutating the population. So mating, it means that you cross your genes for different pulses. So it makes uh, algorithm to search and some around. And mutating uh, is a procedure when you randomly change the genes. It, so th this procedure is for uh, to avoid uh, conver uh, converging the algorithm on a local extremum. So in fact, when you're working with such algorithm, you have uh, several GP parameters that uh, makes as the algorithm converge, such as number of individuals, a fraction of mutated individuals, and a fraction of elite individuals. So when you start to do it, you're just playing around these parameters and hoping that uh, you will find the solutions that will converge. So here, for example, is an uh, example of how the algorithm finding is the shortest pulse. I would just mention that yeah someone can ask why do you implement it uh, because there is only uh, two parameters and you actually build the map but uh, in fact uh, it's quite complicated in scientific paper to to prove that you find uh, the, the global minimum 
and but in two-dimensional problem you actually can prove that the, your algorithm works but anyway if you will be we, talking about production or something so this calibration method of the laser uh, uh, dramatically decrease the number uh, required number of measuring steps to find a better solution so and uh, by designing different uh, types of uh, fitness function you can find pulses for different applications such as the shortest pulses the pulses with a higher energy and even some exotic uh, uh, partially coherent pulses uh, yeah so do you have any question about this part yeah i have a comment uh -huh. uh, yeah we, we have a colleague uh, in our faculty who, who who is very much fond of uh, stochastic algorithms yeah. and uh, i i i see uh, in, in this place he would say that uh, he would suggest you to try the adaptive differential evolution of CMA instead of genetic uh, algorithm optimization. Why? Because they work uh, usually much more efficient. Okay, I will take. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I will. I, I will find out what it is. Uh, okay. So, in fact, then we move uh, further. Uh, and okay, there is uh, as, as I mentioned, there is only two for in experimental setups. There are only two degrees of freedom to tune your parameters. However, so the modeling. Sh so on, on the other hand, uh, numerical modeling uh, gives you more opportunity to tune parameters. So, for example, here you have uh, eight parameters to tune. Uh, and actually, it's hard to iterate the values in experiments such as uh, length of the fiber, coupler ratio, the parameters of the filter in some cases. So we, we built uh, a model uh, based on nonlinear Schrodinger equation and uh, actually try another heuristic algorith algorithm called particle swarm method. Probably, <laughs> as you mentioned, that probably i should use another one but we were like testing different methods uh this method is quite similar to genetic algorithms there is all also we, there is a population called swarm and every particle have a position as a in our case it's a cavity parameters and each particle have a velocity uh, the velocity it's it's mean that the how the parameters should be changed uh, after it, one iteration. So here's a nice uh, demonstration how it works. Uh, sometimes the swarm uh, collects the most of the particle of the swarm they collect in a global uh, minimum of the fitness function. So we designed this uh, 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 so we, we develop such algorithm and then uh, trying uh, to actually to proceed the so-called inverse design of the laser. It means that uh, you put some parameters that you would like to get and the algorithm uh, show you the, the parameters that you need to implement in the laser to get it. So, for example, here we, we have found the pulses that has a 10 picosecond and duration and a 10 nanometer bandwidth. Of course, uh, this system should be tested for different cases. And uh, one of the uh, good part of the swarm particle optimization when you logging your results is that you very fast get a big data that you can analyze. And we were playing around different uh, pulses with different time product. And so actually that the left, uh, uh, right upper corner is empty. Well, actually it's quite obvious because you have, you know, time bandwidth product limitation. So the time, uh, the bandwidth uh, inverse proportional to the time. But we were thinking about how we could push, uh, uh, push this uh, borderline uh, to the upper uh, right corner. So in fact, when we start to analyze, we saw that when we picking the pulses with some energies, 
it takes some line and if you and it's moved towards upper right corner by increasing the energy and uh, in fact to so to to be more uh, variable uh, we had to to increase the amplifying uh, the, the gain inside amplifying fiber so uh yeah so yeah here i finishing about optimization part uh if you uh, have Yosha, i have i have a native question here so uh, maybe on the previous on previous slide so the spectral shape with these two pipes on the sides can you somehow comment on that so by why it's why it looks like that uh, yeah, actually, when I was talking about uh, dissipative soliton, yeah, yeah, it, it appeared already uh, here, right? Yeah, here, it's appeared here. So, in fact, it's counterintuitive. Why? So, yes, f first thing, we are working a normal dispersion regime. So, in fact, here, when I was talking about uh, solitons, uh, the the necessary condition for stable solution is that the sign dispersion and non-linearity will be opposite. This is why it's compensating and why, that's why it is uh, stable. Uh, so if you change the, the, the sign of dispersion into positive, so these two effects will bro broaden uh, pulse in time and the spectral domain. So in fact, at first glance, this pulse cannot be stabilized in a cavity. So to stabilize the, the pulse, you need to introduce the spectral filtration, uh, very, very hard spectral filtration. And this uh, cut, cut, cutting edges of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the pulse, in fact, it's a result of spectral, uh, uh, strong spectral filtration. So after each trip, the pulse broaden spectrally in the time domain, and every time uh, this pulse uh, cut it on the edge, and that's how it's stabilized. Did I answer the question? Yeah. So this is kind of an <coughs> artificial thing because of the because of the reshaping of the pulse. Yes. Yes. Spect yes. Spectral reshaping. You have the typical, but yeah, but no, yeah. Okay. Yes. I will skip. Further explanation. Yes. So, Alexei, could you please go back to this your, your paper and then emphasize uh, more clearly what then you get as a result of the optimization? So, so, uh, so as a result, we, we, we develop a method to invert design the fiber model laser. So, this method show, show so usually how people work here in this field, they well, they use a grid search. So, you, you change the parameters and uh, trying to optimize finding something that is uh, uh, well so what are you looking for in fact these parameters work uh, inter so let's say so you target param parameters are uh, which ones the length of the pulse i see uh, and then and the bandwidth and the bandwidth okay uh, okay so yeah here I finish about optimization and switching. And then, uh, Alex, again, so sorry for interrupting. So since we have like about 10 minutes before Andre disconnects, I suggest maybe you can discuss a bit further plans and then we, we go on discussing these published works. So what do you think? Can we incorporate this at some point within these 10 minutes? Uh, sorry, I don't get what? what? Uh, so can you discuss some maybe some further research plans? Uh, so yeah. what do yeah. Plans or yes, yes, yes. Uh, plans so, is optimization. Uh, not necessarily. So, which directions of research do you plan to pursue further? Let's well, say. Well, at this moment we are working on reinforcement learning, but it's uh, f I, 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 there is some some slides mm -hmm. next to. But yeah, quite a lot of them. So yeah, maybe I can. Huh? Sorry. Okay, I suggest uh, let, let's move on then, if this is logical. Okay, yeah, so... Uh, I'm not sorry, and uh, may I have a short question, please, here? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, would it be possible to, you are trying to find the, uh, so some s stable shape of the pulse, but would it be possible to design 
like uh, to provide some on-demand design of, of, of the pulse in frequency or time domain. For example, if I would like to create some exponentially growing signal or some not Gaussian, maybe some very specific shape of the pulse, it would be possible potentially to do this. Yeah, of course. So if you, so let's say, well, it depends. Well, the question is how much time it will take because there is a curse of dimensionality. So uh, the much uh, parameters you can tune, you should tune or optimize uh, the more testing data you, you need. But yeah, you can design your fitness function as a, like, uh, like taking an arrow between every time point uh, that you're wishing to get and uh, that you get currently get and you can try to find it. But in fact, if, but anyway, so you just first think about if this ration of nonlinearity and dispersion will allow you to, to get such pulses. So mm -hmm. probably it, it's not achievable at all at such uh, parameters. Okay, okay, I see, thank you. Alexey Sherbakov, I think you have an, a microphone on. There are some noises. Please could you turn it off. Okay, so, uh, so can I continue? Yes, please go ahead, but just maybe focusing on the main points because if we have... Yeah, okay, time, uh, uh, yeah, uh, probably I spent a lot of time in answering the question. So uh, here it's an interesting result that we get uh, by creating uh, feedback uh, systems that are assisted by machine learning. So if you see, there is a lot of measuring device that we need to uh, use to, to get uh, K parameters of the pulses. And it's quite expensive and bulky in application when you take the fiber out, fiber laser outside the laboratory. So we were thinking about, is it possible to replace these devices uh, and probably use only one? And uh, our, our side, so we first think about the dispersion for Fourier transformation. It's a very interesting technique uh, and very quite simple. So the idea is follow. So if you use a standard uh, optical spectrum analyzer, you actually measure average of several thousand of pulses. The dispersive Fourier transformation allows you to measure, uh, just uh, take a single shot uh, spectrum. So for one, only one pulse, the idea is as follows. So you put the pulse inside this dispersive, dispersive element and via propagation, via chromatic dispersion, each spectral component, component line up at the time, 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 time scale. And after some simple recalibration of your x-axis, uh, uh, you, you can uh, measure the optical pulse, actually. And uh, this technique gives you information about optical spectrum, about radio frequency spectrum, about energy of the pulse. But the, the, main, the main question, if, if this technique can say you about any temporal properties of the pulse train, because at first glance, the answer is no, because if you use some intensity based measurements, when you uh, lose information about the phase, as a temporal uh, distribution and uh, can correspond to different spectral distribution. But uh, the idea was that the laser actually is some systems that have only a limited uh, solution. So in fact, by using the, by take, uh, so by using, by interpreting the data from dispersive rate transformation, you can use, uh, and assisted with machine learning, you can predict the, 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 the duration of the pulse. So yeah, I will probably skip uh, some part of it. It just says that so that's how you can observe the dispersion measurement. So you can get uh, evolution of the spectral against a uh, uh, round trip. And actually, so we, we, we create such a setup uh, and the main part of this work was to find actually a feature design. So only this set of parameters allow us to predict uh, the duration of the pulse uh, uh, by DFT spectrum. And uh, so, yeah, here it's a... Uh, 
all necessary figures that show that you succeed in uh, classification task and regression task. So we try different uh, types of uh, machine learning algorithms containing key neighbors, XGBoost, random forms, extra trees. Also, there is no mention, but uh, artificial neural network. And they work uh, pretty close to each other. So th as, as I told, uh, the, more, the more, more difficult, uh, it, it was necessary just design a feature that, that, that uh, provide the, the high, high, high accuracy than, than architecture of machine learning algorithm. And we tried an experiment, it is work fine. So we, after we train the, the, the model and uh, start to exploit the laser, it shows that we succeed in predicting uh, duration of the, the pulses. The results were published in optics letters. So, yeah. So, Alexei, let me ask you yeah. a question. So, uh, uh -huh. in these works, do you perform experimental part? Or yes, 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 of course. It's just on, it's a completely experiment. Uh -huh. And then theory is performed by, by your co authors, right? Uh, there is no theory. I mean, there is a, so this person. No, numerics, no numerics, no let's say. Uh, so, well, there is only signal processing applying first part to interpret the dispersion Fourier transformation and uh, to create a model. So there is no any any num uh, numerical calculation in mm -hmm. in terms of modeling. It's a, it's only experiment. So you do do the experiments on your own, do the measurements and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. okay. So yeah. Uh, so we we switch to the last part of my talk, and it actually, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, uh, my, maybe I didn't get. Could, could you clarify one more time? What did you measure? What, what, what quantity is measured here? So so here you look. So in fact, so I use this method that you put a pulse train, and to disperse of element, and you measure by photodiod the the voltage here. After you do this, you actually take so, this. So it, it, it is time resolved voltage? Yes, yes. OK, I see. OK. So after that, you can build such a picture. So you can see that the spectrum of single pulse. So every, every, every row, it's a spectrum of a single pulse. After that, by taking some signal processing, you can take these features. So, for example, optical spectral width of a signal, you can measure it by from 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 this data, and there is like eight of it. So, by so this one is the input parameters into our machine learning algorithm. For example, artificial neur uh, neural network or um, random tree or exaboost. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, j j just to understand. Uh, why ca cannot you uh, numerically back propagate your set of uh, signals? Because you don't know phases. Mm. Uh, what do you need? To, uh, uh, why do you? I, I mean, uh, on, on the previous slide, or maybe. Here? Here? Yeah, here, here. No, no, uh, it's, a, it's a technique to measure. So it just so the, the output radiation is from laser. So to so DFT you use just to 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 measure spectrum, but it's not like a source of the pulses. So you you cannot you, so you cannot apply inverse uh, uh, propagation for for the laser. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Thank and, you. And the parameters here, it's only so it's in the I mean. Here only dispersion is involved. There is no any uh, peak, uh, so it's for for low power, high power. It's quite the same. Yeah, thank you. Right. So, uh, Alexey, then a question to you: Can we skip last part? Or it is crucial for understanding everything because I, I think it's more important to ask some questions than to to, to see all uh, the materials. Uh, okay, if you have any question more, more but okay. Uh, well. Yeah, probably, probably you can finish. We well, can finish. If, if the colleagues are not against, of course. So uh, maybe 
the question uh, again about uh, future research plans because as far as i understand you plan some collaboration with with, with people in this department but yeah. right now i do not see any overlap so maybe you can comment on that uh, mm. but yeah it, it's, it's very interesting field yeah i, I fully agree but uh, in terms of collaboration it wasn't so very clear. It depends what do you what what do you do? <laughs> no, 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 not with me, but you know, you, you know, Andre. Yeah, you know, it, well, in, so first of all, in inverse design is quite common for for every field. So I mean, uh, if you designing some structures, uh, nanostructures, you have a lot of parameters. So this inverse design is. Uh, quite universal you just need to to put some software package that can modulate your your, uh, your system and uh, then you can proceed uh, mm -hmm. so so we speak about some meta materials meta surfaces stuff like that yeah. which we should thank yeah, you Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Second, I mean, well, I didn't have time to explain it, but this one actually is the most interesting one and it's a hot topic. Oh, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, so there, there, so if, uh, so I would say as far as, uh, so reinforcement algorithm is very interesting because it's, uh, it's capable to learn the strategy of dynamic adjustment of your parameters. So they're all things i told before it's about algorithms that uh, optimize the static uh, fitness distrib uh, distribution of fitness function however if you have some for example hysteresis phenomena depending on or be stability where the algorithm should take a consequence of actions these these kind of algorithms are very powerful and very perspective and so if you have some nonlinear systems that some have some multi-stability, I think uh, our algorithm may help to, to solve such problems. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So maybe some other questions from the audience, please. I, I have two more, but please, Mr. Gold. Yeah, may, maybe, maybe I have uh, one. So you showed that you have two of these parameters of input power for, for two loops, right? Yeah. Uh, so did you try to go for more? Uh, so I understand that you would have this. Uh, yeah, actually, it's, <laughs> I understand the all interesting part in the last one that I have no time to, uh, to answer. But uh, yeah. after, so here I, I, we introduce one more parameter. It's a spectral filtration. So it's connected to your other question. Uh, why is the, the, the spectrum mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. so we also introduced a third uh, uh, third parameter even more two or one two two more uh, trying to optimize and here that's uh, how it's uh, op optimize the output power uh, of the radiation in and finding the way uh, dynamically yeah our our is, our is power here on the bottom left right uh, it's not a power; it's after collation function. So it's a, a you can say that it's a duration of your pulse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so so you can see that the so the pulse train on the bottom side. So it's yeah. And is it real time? Yeah, yes, it's a, it's a real time working uh, laser that mm -hmm, finds mm -hmm. the, the highest energy pulse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It just takes uh, like set, set like ten seconds, right? To well, it depends. Actually, we didn't. Well, it depends on your. The only things we are limited here is the time of measuring the whole parameter. So, if you optimize it, it can be really fast. So, people who are doing this you, uh, for different systems, they using FPGA, and this takes like one or less than one second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, and then uh, a scientific question, actually. So have you heard anything about uh, this activity on topological lasers, topological pixel arrays, and stuff like that? Have you met it in the literature? Uh, vex uh, vexels lasers? Uh, no, but it's not just pixels. It's, it's, yeah. it's all about topological lasers. And then the no. people realize them on various platforms. It's a story about achieving high power lasers uh, by synchronizing some independent uh, no 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 i didn't work with, with that uh, no 
right, right. Okay, maybe can discuss later. Okay, good. And then another question, a technical one. So, did you have some experience in uh, uh, being ahead of uh, Russian Science Foundation grants and stuff like that? Mm, head of Russian Science, no. So, I mean, did you have these grants? Well, the, the last one was a uh, uh, Russian Foundation for Basic Research, right? Uh, yeah, for basic research, I was a uh, yeah for young uh, scientists or something, uh -huh. and also I was in. It's called Umnik. I don't know. If yeah, you know yeah. Uh, this one. Uh, you didn't actually, uh, the RSF. Well, I, I work. I mean, I'm. Uh, I, I doing the research so this, this part of the so this part of the work it's actually we doing under supervision of Sergey Turitsin. Uh -huh. so, so he has a reserve you are inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the problem is there is only two of, of uh, you, you you can take only two. Yes, yes, yeah. right, right. But this is a technical. <laughs> That's there, so I have already two of them, so there is no necessary to to, to work. But uh, actually, here we work. So the core team is like three, five students, two master degree and one uh, mm -hmm. PhD, and we are working together. So I supervision their work. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. So just a technical question, you know, uh, not related. Good. Uh, so are there any other questions from the audience? Looks like no, right? But unfortunately, we missed some parts. But nevertheless, thank you, Alexey, for coming. Uh, thanks for okay. giving a nice talk. I guess it's already late in Novosibirsk, so thanks for staying with us. No, <laughs> so it's, late. it's five. It's five o'clock. It's okay. <laughs> it's reasonable. Uh, time, time to go to 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 home. Right, right. So th thanks a lot. Uh, so thank you for uh, your attention. Yeah, if you allow us to, to, to put this recording on YouTube, we will do that if, if you, if you just... Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, very good. So, have a nice uh, evening and then stay in touch. You too. Okay, yeah. thank you for your attention, goodbye. Bye-bye.